So let's do an example of a log log plot for a square. So remember where this all comes from. This is our basic relationship. And by taking the log of both sides and doing a little bit of algebra, I came up with this. So these two blue equations are exactly the same. They're just written in different ways. Um, this is what happens if you take the logarithm of that and simplify a little bit. So let's start off by doing box counting um, as we normally would. So this is a square. You can imagine it's filled in. And let's say the side is 2, and I'm going to say that this first, uh, these first set of boxes have a side of a half. And we can count boxes. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 times 4 is 16. So we see that if s is a half, n of s is 16. Let's go one size smaller, s of a quarter, and line that up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It'll be 8 by 8, so there'll be 64. A quarter, that's 64. Oops, these are slightly different greens. I hope that's not too jarring. And one more. Now this is a size one smaller still. It'll be an eighth. And we're going to get, if I can figure out how to line this up, 16 this way, 16 that way. 16 times 16 is 256. All right. So what we want to do is use these numbers um, in this equation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the logarithm of n of s and the logarithm of s and make a new table of numbers. So let's see. Maybe I'll do that here. So I'm going to have log s and log <coughs> n of s. So let's see. I'll first do that one. So log of a half, 0.5 log, is going to be minus 0 0.301. Then I'm going to take the log of n. So 16 log is 1.204. So let's keep going. The log of a quarter. Lastly, the log of 256 is 2.408. Okay, so again, to get these numbers, I just took the log of those numbers. To get these numbers, I took the log of those numbers. And what I want to do now is plot this on a graph. So the, these are going to be my x values. And these will be my y values. So I can just, on a grid, set of axes, plot x against y. And rather than do that by hand, I had a computer to do that. You could do this on any spreadsheet program. Um, I chose to do it on R, which is a statistics package. And if I do that, um, this is what I get. So there were three data points. And I've drawn them as um, these big squares. So just to be sure we see what's happening here. This is the middle point. Um, so minus 0 0.6 and what was that, 1.8? Yeah, so this is the plot, the point that I'm plotting. When log s is minus 0 0.602, log n of s is 1.08. So minus 0 0.6 plus 1.8. So as advertised, these points fall along a line. I had the program plot this line in addition to it. We could have kept going, plotted a 16th, a 32nd, and so on, and we would get um, more and more points on the line. In a more realistic application, you'll probably want more data points. But for the square to illustrate this, I think this was plenty. So then what we need to do is we need to figure out the slope of this line. And the slope of this line is going to be minus d. Because right, we have this relationship here, and this is a line in disguise. y equals mx plus b. 
So log s plays the role of x, log n plays the role of y, so minus d is going to be the slope. So let's figure out the slope of this line. And there are lots of ways you can do that. You need to choose two points on the line and then figure out the rise, figure out the run. So let's see. I'm going to choose as my two points uh, this one and that one. So you're free to choose whatever points seem convenient. These seem kind of nice to me. So I need to figure out delta y. That's this distance. And let's see, that's from here to here, that's 1. This is 1.5, that's going to be about 1.6. Um, and that's minus, I should have better, minus 1.6. Why is it minus? Because it's going downhill. The change in y from here to here is negative. Okay, what about delta x? Well, the distance in the x direction is, let's see, 0 0.2468 is going to be 0 0.8. So the slope of this line is m, is rise over run, delta y over delta x. Let's plug in minus 1.6 over 0 0.8. Sure enough, that's minus 2. So that means right, we decided that the slope m is the same thing as minus d. So m equals minus d. d is the box counting dimension. m was minus 2. So what do we end up with? d equals 2. So yet again, uh, a lot of work to find out that a square is two-dimensional. But um, the point of this was not to learn anything new about a square, but to see how this process works. So let me summarize it again quickly. We're working with this relationship. And um, we can take the log and simplify and get this. And then we see that if we plot log s versus log n of s, we will get a straight line. Um, so, I did that here. We did box counting, then I took logs on a calculator, then I plotted it um, with a statistics program. You could plot it by hand, you could plot it um, using any spreadsheet. And in this case, we see that there's a line, and we can calculate the slope, and the slope up to a minus sign is the box counting dimension. Now, of course, you can have your spreadsheet or stats program calculate this slope as well, and indeed, you'll get uh, d equals 2. Lastly, for completeness' sake, let's think about the intercept for a moment. In almost every application that I'm aware of, the dimension d, that the, the exponent up here, is what we're interested in. But we can get c from this plot, too. So let me say quickly how you would do that. So in this form, y equals mx plus, plus b, b is the y-intercept. So the y-intercept is going to be log c. So let's see what the y-intercept is. y-intercept Well, we can read it off the graph. It's um, 0 0.6. And your, if you're using a spreadsheet or a statistics program, uh, the program will probably tell you this as well. So b is 0 0.6. Well, log of c is 0 0.6. And um, what does that mean? That means 10 to the 0 0.6 is c. So let's evaluate that. 10 to the 0 0.6 is 3.98. 
and that's approximately four. I did a little bit of, this turns out to be not exactly 0.6. Um, and so uh, it's a little bit more, and so this turns out to actually be four. So 3.98, very, very close to four. So let's think about what that means. Let's go back here, just finish this up. So by analyzing this line, we came up with both D and C. So we found that D is two and C is four. That means that N of S is four times one over S squared. So this four is related to the fact that the square that we started with has a size of two, a side of two. And this is because the square is two dimensional. And you can check, you can plug these numbers into this formula. And indeed, you'll see that if you say plug in S is half, N is 16, or any of these pairs, that will make this formula true. So the main point is that um, most of the time we're interested in D, but you can also figure out C um, if needed. So um, in the next quiz, you'll get to um, practice this idea just a little bit. And then we'll see what happens when we apply this to a shape that's not as simple as a square.